Well, the ice costs X. The refrigeration to freeze the ice costs Y. You could do that. It's called a profit and loss statement. And in laundromats, they typically don't exist. Let's talk on that for a minute. This is so utterly grotesque. The people that are selling their laundromats or the brokers that are doing exactly that, they claim that this is an absentee turnkey business, please. You don't hear me saying that. Yeah, if you do it right, they're going to run without you being there running a mop every day. Salt of the earth, nothing wrong with that. So. You're looking at a laundromat. Let's do a little, uh, a little PI thing here real quick. Okay? This could be the entire gist of one of these lives that I do. Try to follow me. Are you, are you fans of clues and private investigators? Well, put on your thinking cap. Grab your pipe and your monocle. Who am I referring to? Book of spells. You're interested in owning a laundromat. You don't know Danny D'Angelo? Hell, I don't exist. I'm not a clickbait guy. I don't have 1.85 million followers because I run around showing coin collection videos. Therefore, you're going to get the real poop, some dude sitting in his office. You're interested in owning a laundromat. How are you going to do it? You're going to buy it. So you start looking up biz ass sell or whatever myriad of websites with business brokers who will sell you a nail salon, a national chain, a yogurt shop, a burger joint, or a laundromat, whatever. Do they know and understand any of those businesses? Well, they probably know how to eat cheeseburgers, but that's about goddamn it. So this lovely business broker, we'll call him Ed, he rolls around in his Cadillac and picks you up at the coffee shop. He wants to have control of you like a car salesman, and he drives you over to the laundromat. Pay attention. We have several large operations in the work. We're rather busy, Alderman, so what can I do for you? I came up to congratulate you on a job well done. Let's have a look at this place. It's 1145, downtown laundromat in a small strip mall. He rolls you in, and the two of you walk into the laundromat. 3,000 square foot store, stainless steel equipment as far as the eye can see. It's mid-October. All of these are clues. There's two customers in the laundromat. So you peruse the location. You don't know what the hell you're looking at or looking for. You don't have a notepad. You feel a little weird because Ed's there, right? He's a little bit like Lurch and he's following you around and looking at you with the hairy eyeball over your shoulder. Mr. Nitz, you're an educated man. Let me pay you the compliment of being blunt. You don't have your wife or your significant other you know the type that says, oh my God, the place is a little small, but we can put some curtains over here. It's just you and your thoughts. Here come the clues. While you're standing there looking around, there's only two customers in the store. One of them approaches Ed because he's in a golf shirt that says biz buy, biz sell, biz. Got a clipboard, so he looks officious. One of those two customers comes over and says, Sir, that machine isn't working. Oh, I, I, I don't work here. The entire time you're there, you hear a phone ringing. It's maddening in the back room. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. Clues. Are you writing this down? You notice the back room. You can hear the phone really well because there's a curtain drawn. There's no door, Dutch or otherwise. There doesn't appear to be any way to lock that room out. There's also a small counter with a bunch of soaps and bleach for sale. There's no one manning the counter. Doesn't appear to be anybody there. You start chatting up Ed and he responds and you're talking about profit and loss because you've owned a few businesses, you're 40 plus years old, you've got a 401k, significant other, two kids, half a dog. Life is good and you're looking to buy a business. You don't know shit about a laundromat because you've never stepped foot in one in your entire life, nor has your wife, husband, significant other, bestie friend. If you walk through this door now, you're walking into a world of trouble. And there's no turning back, you understand? Yes, I do. Still following me? Good. We're coming to a question.
Phones ringing incessantly, ring, 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 ring in that back room behind that curtain. All you want to know about from Ed, the business broker, are numbers. While you start talking, the second of two customers comes over to Ed and says, hey, that dryer isn't working. He says, <laughs> so two of the coin customers have found broken machines. You following? Sure you are. I'm such an orator. What a storyteller. While you're talking, no less than four people walk in Santa Claus-like with giant bags of laundry over their shoulders. They walk straight to that curtain in that back room and they peer behind it, dumbfounded. Two of them just stand there the whole time you're talking to Ed. Two of them leave. One writes a note. What are we up to, four? A fifth one walks in, pulls the curtain, even though they've all done it, makes a beeline over to Ed and says, where's Mr. Kim? He's always here. Ed says, oh, I got the fuck out of here. Don't mind their shirt. I don't, I don't work here. Dollar signs. Because he sees you wear a Rolex. Ed, I really just want to know one thing. What does this place earn? And he shows you the P&L statement. Short. What's a P&L? Profit and loss. There's one side and the other. Share your good fortune on such a lovely day. How much the laundromat earns, right, is the profit. This one is a little more complex because there's two streams of income. The machines that you're looking at, they're all stainless steel, they all look lovely. And the wash dry fold, the drop off, the we do. No delivery, no vans, none of that, which is doing better. We'll get to the questions. I'm still giving you the clues because your dumbass knows nothing about laundromats, knows really not much about cash or brick and mortar businesses because your 401k is put away because you're an IT professional. You haven't even seen a written paycheck your whole adult life. What's that? <laughs> what is that? Ed is hemming and hawing and you can tell. Well, her, her give me that P&L statement. He's got a copy. He's got horn rim glasses, so he's ready to help you. Ed, you're showing me profits from two income streams. The machines and the we do, the wash, dry, fold, the drop off. We don't even know what to call it in this industry. What's on the loss side, boys and girls? Throw it in the chat. What's on the loss side? Rent. The bills. Payroll. How much does it cost to run Amazon? F*** you, Jeff Bezos. How many employees do they even have? Wow. Part of doing business. That's what's on the loss side on a P&L. You subtract the L from the P, and now you have... The P, the net. But therein lies the rub, because someone who is unscrupulous will fudge both sides, okay? I've given you all the clues you need, but here comes the big question. Is everything on this P&L, you ask Ed, the business broker? He says, yes, to the best of my knowledge. Oh, sh Get to you, and you took a pawn. Hey, everyone can be got. Then I'll see him in hell. You're asking a very pointed question. Are all of the bills and or losses on this P&L, Ed? He says, to the best of my knowledge. Huh, look at it very carefully. I'm going to give you everything that's on the P&L. If you're taking notes and listening, this is part of this Inspector Gadget shit that we're figuring out. Everything that's on the P&L. There's two profit centers. We talked about that. On the L side, he has no more than this and no less. Rent, that's fifth or sixth down because he doesn't want you to notice how much it is. He has a line item because Ed built this thing and one of the line items is equipment, meaning the debt service, how much you pay every month. The zero, it's all zeroed out. He left it on there. Gas, water, electric, it's all in there. Those are a pittance. This guy's electric bills, $394 a month, typically, okay? Bleach, and last month it was $84. Counter items, it says, right? The items that they sell. I've already given you a lot of clues. That's all that's on the P&L statement. That's it. What's missing? What's missing on the P&L? Now, you're not satisfied with what you see here. This P&L statement says that this laundromat that happens to be for sale for $300,000 is earning, let's round it, $100,000 a year gross. And the net, it's netting $33,000 a year. You ask Ed to prove it. 
Ed, the business broker, prove these numbers. Oh, yeah, of course. I have a portfolio right here. He fumbles through his briefcase that smells like cat piss, and he hands you a couple of bills. There's the water bill. There's the gas bill. There's the electric bill. Statements for two years. Guys owned it for five. Okay, thank you. What did he give you? He gave you proof of the loss is, not the profit is. Okay, thank you, Ed. Yeah, that's nice. Where's the proof of the income? Now we get to the fun part. Raise your hand. Just put a bunch of X's across the top chat if you've been in this exact f***ing scenario. Oh, <laughs> it's a cash business, says Ed. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Chortle, chortle, elbow. Does she go? Does she go? It's a cash business. What does that mean? Well, Mr. Kim doesn't deposit all of the money. Nor will you when you're running the place, sir, ma'am. Fish on. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay. okay. So the operator who's selling the business for $300,000 doesn't put all of the money in the bank because it's a cash business and they're trying to hide something from the government. Oh, okay. So that they don't have to pay all the taxes on the income. Okay, I get it. Now, you shouldn't have to go into some lengthy diatribe and find some formula online and figure out how much gas and water is being used and how much the guy is earning because he's supposed to tell you because he's trying to sell it to you, okay? And I know this is a one-way story because I can't hear you guys shouting at your screens, so jump into the chat and comment. Answer my questions. What's the next question you should ask of Ed? Let me help you. Have you ever owned an all-cash business? I mean a serious cash business. Maybe it's a food truck or 10. Maybe it's a string of laundromats or 20. Cash is not dying. It never will. If you did own a cash business, and if you don't, never have, other than the lemonade stand, if you've never done it, then you can't truly answer this next question. Would you deposit all of the money in the bank? I don't know. doesn't matter. I always did because I knew the day would come when I wanted to take my exit and I wanted to show real statements because I've been through this bullshit. The answer is yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Would you keep books? Would you write everything down like the kid in the lemonade stand? My answer to you is a resounding yes. Whether you understand that or not depends on whether or not you've ever owned a business. Even those kids, you and your nephew and your sister, are writing down how much you earned. Because you got to divvy it up. You got to divide it by three in that scenario. That's the pudding. That's the good stuff. How could I possibly know whether or not you or Mr. Kim would keep books? Well, Al Capone went to federal prison for life, and it wasn't for extortion or murder, paying off politicians, bribery, or booze. It was the fact that he wrote all that shit down in a coded book, and he went to jail for tax evasion because it showed his profit and loss. You want to do it now? No. You want to yeah. go to mine now? Come on, you can, son of a bitch. What? Easy. You talk to me like that in front of my son, f*** you and your family. Now, guys, I'm not saying you're a bootlegger or a murderer, but I'm saying that if you had a cash business, did or did not deposit all of the money in the bank, you sure as hell would write everything down in a book. So what do I ask Ed next? Let me see the books. You know what that answer is? Every single time, he doesn't keep books. Liar! Now, I told you I wanted you to sleuth, and I want all of you on the edge of your seat right now, and I want you to be ready at your keyboard because I want an answer from all of you. I don't give a shit if you're first or last to answer this. I gave you all the clues you need. What was missing from the profit and loss? I told you everything that was on it. Rent, a line item zero for equipment, soap, etc. that they sell at the counter, gas, water, electric, and let's say repairs, which he had like $90 a month, which is a joke. One drain valve breaks, or maybe not. Because here's another clue. The two people that were in that store walked over and tapped Ed and said, sir, my machine's broken. He told you to be there at what time? At 11.45. Why? Mr. Kim went to lunch. He never does that. He closed that little curtain. Let's start to get into what's really happening here. What are you afraid of? You guys. 
You guys that are watching this, give me your answer. What's missing from the P&L? What line item is missing? Only two customers in the store, why? Because if 10 customers came in, they wouldn't be able to find a working washer or dryer. Before your dumb ass showed up, Mr. Kim did a loop and ripped off all the out of order signs. Stainless equipment looks the same as it did 20 years ago. Looks the same. You don't know if you want LG, HIP, Speed Queen, Wascomat, ADC, Dexter equipment. You don't know. Ed doesn't know. The consumer doesn't care. Mr. Kim ripped off all those out of order signs, which would have kept those two customers from trying to use a washer and dryer, respectively, and putting money into a machine that's broken. Since the out of orders were gone, he had to run over there. We're standing in the laundromat. We're potentially going to buy this place for $300,000. And Ed is the business broker with horn rimmed glasses and a smelly briefcase. And he's giving us every single clue that we need. The PL is lying. Because if you don't put a loss or a bill on that PL, what else are you lying about? Remember when you walked in? What was happening nonstop? Come on, kids. Ring, 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 ring. Did I mention a phone bill? If the business broker and Mr. Kim and everybody on the other side of the table that's trying to sell you this failing business lies about a fucking $37 phone bill, what else are they keeping from you? Everything. Are you a sleuth? Did you pay attention to my story? That phone ringing in the back room is not on the PL. It does not have a phone bill. Let's go even further. Most of the profit being made in this laundromat is coming from Mr. Kim's labor. You're right. Most of the profit is being earned by wash, dry, fold. Monday through Monday, Mr. Kim or his wife or his grown kids are in that laundromat every day. Is that your plan? This is not an absentee business. This is not turnkey picking up money out of the streets. It is golden if you set it up properly and you and your wife and your grown kids are not going to work in the laundromat. I've figured that out for you. I'm not keeping any secrets. I have an idea. Don't get yourself in the predicament where you're standing in front of a business broker looking at someone's failure because you have to ask, why is he selling? The other biggest item on there is the fact that there's no line item for labor. So if you look at a store that makes $33,000 net without the lies and the phone bill, what's Mr. Kim's time worth? He's paying himself far less than minimum wage. And trust me, kids, People jump into these stores every day in this country and the world, and they end up owning that store for only $150,000. And they think, shit, howdy, I just saved $150,000 off the real sales price. You're going to own one, two, 10 laundromats, and all it's gonna cost you is your signature. Take that $300,000 sale price and chuck it. Does the store have to be for sale for you to scoop it up? No. If it is, great. Don't open another window on your computer right now and start looking for laundromats for sale because that's not how we scout. I hope you enjoyed story time. I'm pretty sure this hot water heater's got a few more good years left in it.